Hey guys, today's gonna be a watch along reaction to Greg Gottfried's video on problems with selling on Etsy that nobody's talking about. Let's get to it. Before we watch Greg's video, I'm putting it on 1.25x speed to speed it up just a little bit. I'll also link to it in the YouTube cards up here in case you wanna watch it on your own time. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining kind of the deal breaker reason as to why I don't use Etsy's platform for print on demand. Now, as many of you guys probably know, that's crazy, he doesn't use it at all. When I first expanded from Amazon to Etsy, I doubled my sales, so I hope he has a good reason. <laughs> I've been selling t-shirts online through print on demand for over seven years now. So I feel like I know the space. I've tried all of the platforms and there's one reason that no one really talks about that I don't use Etsy for print on demand. So without further ado, let's just get right into this video. So there's three reasons. Real quick, just mentioning like I've sold since 2017 and um, things change. I'm not saying that he doesn't know things change. I'm assuming everybody knows things change, but you know, it's one thing to say, hey, I've been selling for six, seven years on and off or like I used to sell, but I don't anymore. It's another to say, hey, it's been seven years and imply that you've been doing it actively because a lot of people get a big YouTube following and then stop selling print on demand. I can't say a lot of people, but I mean, Greg's got half a million subscribers. How much time do you think he spends every day in the print on demand streets? I'm willing to venture a guess. It's not as much as it used to be. Let's put it that way why I don't use Etsy. Now, the first two are really not big reasons and I could get over them. The third one's the deal breaker. But with that said, the first two you really need to be aware of as someone who's new to print on demand. So the first reason is that every listing that you upload to Etsy's platform comes with a 20 cent listing fee. Now, this really isn't a deal breaker. This isn't really a problem at all. It's just something to be aware of. The other print on demand platforms that... Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, guys, you need to know your fees. There's the 20 cent listing fee and it renews quarterly. So you actually pay it, uh, no, it's not quarterly, sorry, I say it's quarterly. It renews every four months, so you pay it three times a year, even for listings that don't sell. A uh, quick plug for my private community, if you become a member of my private community, linked in the description, not only do you get to work directly with me on your business, but I'll get you, you know, hundreds and hundreds of free Etsy listings valued at more than what it costs to join the community. So that's linked in the description. Quick plug there, organically. That I personally use, they have no listing fee. So you can upload as many designs as you want and you don't have to pay a listing fee. So that's the first thing to be aware of. It's really not a big problem. And moving on to these. So he said his other platforms he prefers don't charge listing fees. Um, I mean, it doesn't, I, to me personally, I'm just letting you know how, because it's supposed to be a reaction video. I apologize for cutting him off. But like, I like to just do all the above, right? If there's fees, but my profits exceed the fees, then... I mean, it's not always that simple, obviously, right? It's a function of how much time it takes me to generate those profits and how much am I making. But like, if they exceed the fees, I mean, that, that to me is a no brainer. I don't care what the fees are. I'm gonna pursue the profits, try to double, triple down on that platform that's bringing me, you know, in this case, like I said, Etsy doubled my sales when I first expanded to Etsy from Amazon. The second reason, this one's slightly more of a problem, but ultimately it's not the deal breaker. What this one is, is if you're using Etsy for print on demand, you are going to be charged every time someone places an order, and then you'll receive the funds from the customer, which has the cost of the order plus the profit margin that you built in. This is just something that you really need to be aware of because it's going to charge your credit card on file every time someone places an order, and then afterwards you are going to receive the full amount of that charge plus the profit. The other platforms that I use, they don't charge you anything. Simply, they just do it how I think they should do it, which is just giving you your split of the profit. They don't charge you anything, so every Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I guess it's worth noting this if you're only trying to advertise the other platforms where you don't have to keep a card on file to pay the production fees. But like, again, it's just, <laughs> I think of it as conquest. You know, I wanna occupy as much online real estate as possible with my listings, right? I wanna be indexed all over Google search results. I wanna be on the platforms in case the customer goes directly to Etsy or directly to eBay or directly to Redbubble. I wanna be everywhere. Right? I'm not worried about the fact that you know they have to charge my credit card. And in this case specifically, Etsy is actually really good about paying you back. Right? They, I'm pretty sure you can do daily frequency payouts. I could be wrong because I'm pretty sure I just set it to weekly. But um, you can, I mean, if you compare this to Amazon, Amazon's terrible about how long they hold your money for. Etsy will pay you back pretty quickly, at least relative to Amazon. Everything's ultimately free. You don't even need to have a card on file because they're not going to charge you for anything. Now, with those two out of the way, those are kind of reasons that I could get over for using Etsy. But the third one here, this is the one that nobody talks about. This is the one that's a total deal breaker for me. When you use Etsy for print on demand, no matter how much you put in the description of order information or frequently asked questions or sizing charts or anything you put there, people are still going to have questions for you as a seller. And Etsy puts this button there where anyone can message the seller. This is the big... 
it's a good point. <laughs> it doesn't matter how clear and obvious you make things, you're still gonna get messages from buyers. Problem because essentially, if you're a print on demand seller on Etsy, you are now also a full time customer service rep. I know a lot of people don't realize this, and a lot of people don't talk about it until they've sold a lot on Etsy. But the more sales that you get on Etsy, the more questions you're going to have to answer on your account. Now, if you just ignore for what it's worth, this is true about Amazon Seller Central as well, and I would not recommend shying away from Amazon or Etsy uh, because of it. Like, I always try to harp on things in life and in business, right? But in life too, <laughs> this is full spectrum, are only as hard as you make them on yourself. <laughs> like my, it starts with my mental like kind of attitude, which I tend to just be as positive as possible about everything. I look at things for exactly what they are and I say, how can I make this easy on myself? In the case of being a customer service rep for both Amazon and Etsy, which is 100% accurate as he described, um, like I just have my web browser, like I use, it helps that I was a former web developer, but I have multiple web browsers that I always have open. When I open them, they have tabs defaulted to exactly where I need to be. So that if somebody asks me a question, I just respond. It's like two seconds. Like, and you can also say no, you know what I mean? You don't have to say yes to every potential customer to try to lock in a sale. If what they're asking is going to take too long, just say no or these questions and you don't answer them, you could run into a lot of trouble. The first thing is your average response time is going to show as really bad on your account. The second is people are going to have bad reviews for you as a seller because you didn't answer their questions. And the third thing is some of them may be actual legitimate reasons or accidents that someone made when ordering that you need to manually take care of before that order is fulfilled. Now, some Yeah, that last thing he said is actually the most important. Like if somebody orders and needs something changed, like the address, you need to get to it like right away, which is why I'm saying just make a habit, like open a web browser and keep a tab open you know what I mean? Whatever it takes. Like I may, I mean, I, I have a million things going on all at once simultaneously and it doesn't stop me. Like I, it's easy for me, but I, I know former web developer, all that good stuff. I'm good at computers, but I, I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. Right. I, that's how I feel anyways. Some of these types of questions that you wouldn't think that people would have are last minute cancellations. Maybe they ordered the product and they wanted a different one or slightly different and they want to cancel that order. You have to do that before the order gets fulfilled or they entered the wrong shipping address and you have to change that or update it before that order gets fulfilled and shipped out. Also, yeah, both good points. It could be just general order questions. Hey, do you offer this slightly different? Can you customize the design with my name in it or something like that? And then all of the slew of customer service questions, which are basically exchanges, refunds, returns, all of those things. See, I would just keep like your notepad open all day with canned generic responses to common questions. I do this for Amazon. I do it for Etsy. They ask me a question. I just go find the right response, copy paste. It, it works almost every time, like in terms of like what they ask that I have a pre-written response for. So it doesn't have to be that big of a deal, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad point. He's making good points. Um, but that being said, you can make it easy on yourself. Amazon even lets you actually write templates. So Amazon's all for it. You can save the template in your buyer seller messaging and there's a little drop down. You can just like find the response and um, yeah, they make your life easy. You are now responsible for. Now, as I was talking about in one of the recent videos on this channel with all the big print on demand changes, there's kind of been a divide in print on demand in the last couple of years. Now, essentially what this split is, is that there's passive print on demand and there's active print on demand. Essentially passive print on demand are a couple different websites, the ones that I personally use, that are totally passive. You upload the designs, every single thing is done for you. These websites even take care of the customer service, the exchanges, all of that for you. And then the active side of print on demand, this is the newer side. This is basically more hands-on. So you have to drive. Yeah, for what it's worth guys, like Amazon, Redbubble and Teespring were the logos he showed there. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's almost like less our business. You could make the same argument about Etsy and Amazon, but like if you're a third party seller on um, Etsy or Amazon or eBay, like it's your seller account that is displayed to the customer for better or worse. You know, when it comes to Amazon merch, I mean, I do actually like that it shows Amazon as the seller because I, I know it increases conversion rate, but it's worth, you know, thinking about. Uh, and yeah, he said Teespring. Well, yeah, in Teespring, you're definitely driving your own traffic here. Drive your own traffic. You have to answer customer service. It's more of a, you are running that business, not so passive as the other side. Now Etsy's platform for print on demand falls somewhere in the middle. Etsy is going to drive the traffic for you. So you'll get sales basically passively. However, you are going to have to do the customer service and all of the messaging, really the more active side. This is a true deal breaker for me on their platform because when I build my print on demand businesses, I want them to be 100% passive. A lot of people aren't thinking past 50 sales per month or something to that effect, but start thinking about a thousand sales per month or numbers in that scale. If your print on demand business starts to grow and you get into a thousand sales per month, that may easily translate into 300 questions per month that you have to answer. Now, since Etsy still has that passive nature to it, it's going to be driving sales 24 seven, but the double edged 
sword to that is that you're going to be receiving questions 24 seven. And you now have to have your phone on you all the time, responding to them as quickly as possible to make sure that your reviews stay high and you get customers taken care of if it's something that's time sensitive. I really- Yeah, for what it's worth, like in that example, you know, if if your ability to answer questions is exceeded by your, um, sorry, yeah, if your sales are so high that you can't find time to answer the questions, like like in the case of a thousand sales a month, let's say you make $10 per sale, $10,000 profit a month, you can hire a virtual assistant. And um, again, it's like, you just hire the, you know what I mean? And when you train them, like make videos in case that virtual assistant quits, show the video to the next one that you hire. There's websites like onlinejobs.ph that make it very easy to find qualified people that are great at what they do. You send them the already pre-recorded videos. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. Really recommend using one of the websites that's fully passive. That way, if you go on a cruise or you go on vacation and you don't want to be on your phone, you can rest assured knowing that you don't have to lift a finger because you're not responsible for any of these things. It's fully taken care of for you. If you're using the Etsy platform, then you'll have to either answer those questions yourself, you're always going to be checking your phone, or you're going to have to hire someone. There's also vacation mode, right? You can just turn it off and you won't make any sales, but it does work if you actually don't want to deal with it and you don't hire anybody want to take care of those questions for you. Hiring someone to answer these customer service questions for you can be just as hard because you're training them, you're making sure that they're staying working for you, you're making sure that they're keeping their quality up. So coming up in next week's video. So the video is about over with guys. I just wanted to give my thoughts at the end that I would definitely never recommend not selling on Etsy. It gets like 400 million visits a month from potential customers and it ranks really well on Google. Um, you guys know that already because you subscribe to my channel. And obviously Etsy is really popular among print-on-demand sellers. There's a ton of great YouTubers out there that specialize in Etsy. So uh, I get the, I get Greg's point, but you know the the passive. I, maybe this was just a video that he put together because he thought it would be a good hook and help his YouTube channel perform. I think if we actually sat down together and talked about this, he'd be like, "Well, of course, man. Yeah, you you got to sell on Etsy. I mean, it's it's like the number two platform to Amazon probably when it comes to print-on-demand." Um, but in terms of like putting together a YouTube video, I think I get why he put this together. Um, if he's, you know, as good a businessman as he appears to be, as his YouTube channel would imply, I'm sure he sees the value in establishing a presence on Etsy. And for what it's worth, guys, like when you set up your business on Etsy, when your print on demand business on Etsy and you integrate with a production partner, for instance, Awkward Styles has a direct integration. It's a two click. So you click twice, you click once in awkward styles to say connect to Etsy. It takes you to Etsy and then they say confirm. You hit yes. And in two clicks, you've now established a software integration between Etsy and awkward styles so that you can push products very easily through a very user-friendly UI in awkward styles. And then when they sell, they get automatically fulfilled, shipped to your customer. The tracking information gets uploaded to Etsy automatically and then Etsy notifies your customer it's a pretty beautiful system with minimal, minimal effort. Compare this to what it used to be like to start a brick and mortar store uh, a decade ago, two decades ago, right? Like we're spoiled if things are only 98% automated and 2% you know, active. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Um, would you shy away from Etsy because of this? Uh, I don't think you need to choose between Etsy or the other options. I think we should do all the above and really just go for dominance in whatever niche that we decided to research and design and do seo for let's be dominant let's be everywhere let's think in terms of someone goes to google and is looking for a product that we're selling and we want them to type it into google and we dominate the whole first page of search results because we're on all the major platforms that's my thoughts anyways guys anyways thanks you thank you for watching this video please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out and i will see you tomorrow with a new one